The Queen of Granada by M. Riff Chapter 189, The Rhythm It took several weeks before the journalists and paparazzi finally gave up their relentless siege of the house. Like hungry vultures they disappeared, only to reappear at another scene of disaster. Rita had hoped that Rosen would eventually come out of the house and find peace. But that hope faded. It's a myth when people say that time can heal all wounds. Rosen, once a healer herself, had explained to Rita that the cemetery was filled with people who had hoped for time to mend their wounds. A bodily wound heals from the bottom up and ends when the edges meet. The wound in Rosen's soul had neither bottom nor edges. With Espanto by her side, Rita made several trips to the library to connect with Grandma Nara and seek advice. But without Nuria's presence, they were unable to realize the connection. Rosen's frazzled nerves made her hypersensitive to light and sound, causing frequent sleep interruptions. The resulting sleep deprivation only heightened her tension, creating a vicious cycle. Rita put oil on all the hinges of the house to prevent unnecessary noise. In addition, she set up a camping tent over Rosen's bed to limit the light and sound around her. It created a kind of cocoon that also ensured the maintenance of a stable body temperature during sleep and thereby improved the quality of sleep. Rita even purchased an old record player and English music records to uplift Rosen's spirits, though this backfired. The music brought back memories of her stressful college years and rebellious student protests. Despite these efforts, Rosen remained reluctant to leave the house and interact with others. Finally, Rita decided to brew a special herbal concoction that Rosen had used for similar conditions. However, Rosen had burned all her medical books and recipe booklets, and Rita had to rely on her memory to select the ingredients and their proportions. She let it steep overnight and served it to Rosen the next day just after breakfast. She had learned that the side effects of the medicine could have unpredictable consequences if you took it on an empty stomach. Rosen slept peacefully in his tent for three entire days. Rita checked her pulse and breathing occasionally, and they seemed fine. One morning Rita was awakened by loud music. At first, she thought it was one of the boys from the street playing Bob Marley's reggae tunes on his ghetto blaster. But the music came from inside the house. When she entered the kitchen, she was surprised to see Rosen swaying to the rhythm as if dancing into a trance. Rosen had learned this technique from Eastern dervishes and used it occasionally in her group treatments of patients. It looked like she was trying to shake off the effects of the powerful herbal concoction. Without disturbing her, Rita prepared some food and set the table on the veranda. Soon Rosen joined the table and ate with an impressive appetite, as if she hadn't eaten in ages. After a shower, she agreed to leave the house and go for a walk in the city. She shielded her eyes behind black sunglasses and wore a sports cap on her head. At first glance, they could hardly be distinguished from two foreign tourists strolling around in the historic city. She also did that in the following days. People on the street reacted differently, some walked by in silence while others tried to make eye contact with Rosen. But everyone showed respect. Even the nuns had stopped crossing themselves as they passed. Thank you.